welcome to The Real Talk with Miss B, where Miss B spills all the tea. So today we're going to be talking about how to film a self-tape. If you are here, you are most likely here because you need to film a self-tape for my short film, which I am auditioning right now. So we will get into that right now. Because we are in quarantine, everything has gone digital, which means casting is now online via Zoom or via self-tape. Self-tapes are common and they have been common for years. However, it is more popular now because of quarantine because people cannot travel. <gasps> my dog, say hi. Appa, do you like to do self-tapes? Oh God. So let's actually walk through the process of a self-tape. Once you know that you're gonna get a self-tape, you get the sides. Sides are just short snippets of the script and they ask you to use that for your audition. The sides contain the character that you are auditioning for. So you must audition as that character with these sides or these scenes. Once you read the sides and you know your lines and you're memorized, now you have to start filming it. Obviously when you film it, you can film it on your phone. You have to make sure that it is landscape. It must be horizontal, which means the phone is this way and not this way. What happens if you record this way is you're gonna get huge black lines in your self-tape when you send it. It doesn't really look very professional. It doesn't look good. You have to make sure that your phone is horizontal. Also, there are a couple things that you can use to help with your self-tape. I'm using a tripod as we speak. It's a nice little tripod that I can actually carry anywhere. So if I need to do a self-tape on the spot, I have it with me and I can do a self-tape wherever or whenever I need to. Also, you need to make sure that you have good sound. I'm using a small, little microphone on top of my camera. Also, you have to make sure that when you're filming, the background is nice and clean. So there shouldn't be anything like crazy, crazy wallpaper or crazy stuff in the background. Or if you're filming with a bed, your bed shouldn't be all messy. It should be made. It should be nice and clean. Just a clean, nice background. Also, a wall can work as well. So I actually have a whole roll of photography paper that I use for my self-tapes just to have a nice, clean background that's not distracting. Also, it makes me pop. Another big thing is good lighting. You do not want to have light directly behind you and you want to make sure that you have a good three-point lighting or a good direct lighting. Natural lighting is the best because it just complements your skin and it looks natural and you know that natural lighting is always going to look good. You also want to make sure that nothing is shadowy. So there shouldn't be crazy shadows. There shouldn't be one big light from the window from the side. So if you're going to shoot with lighting, make sure that you're shooting in front of a window so that direct sunlight is coming coming towards you where you get natural light. So now that we've discussed lighting and we've discussed background a little bit, now you need to start filming it. Once you start filming it, you have to make sure that one, you should be memorized. That's the easiest part. And two, you have to have another person saying the other lines behind the camera. Because it is quarantine, some people are like, I don't have someone to do the lines in my household or where I live. What can I do? You can Zoom call someone to do the other lines on the other end. You have to make sure that it is audible and that your phone or recording device can catch audio from your Zoom call as well as you. But the Zoom call should not be the loudest thing on the self-tape. You should be the loudest thing on the self-tape. So if I'm about to do my self-tape, I want to make sure that my reader is ready, they know what they're reading, and that they are put in a good spot where I'm going to be the loudest thing. Not extremely loud, but I'm very legible and I'm the show and I'm the product rather than that person being featured. Also, you you need to make sure that you have a nice shot. The camera should not be directly below you. It should not be directly above you. It should be directly in front of you at eye level. I made sure that this camera is in front of me and it's not tilted down, tilted up, and I have a nice medium shot. The medium shot should be about to the chest and a little bit above your head. So this right here is a good medium shot. Now the first thing you most likely are gonna do is slate. Slate is directly into the camera. So if I were to be speaking in the camera, which I'm pretty much doing right now, I would be slating and usually they say you have to slate your name, your age, your location, and what role you're auditioning for. So I can say, hi, my name is Miss B. I am going to be auditioning for Jojo Siwa's best friend and I will be located in blah, blah, blah. And then after that, you can cut and then start filming your scene. The scene that you are filming should not be faced directly into the camera. If I'm looking at my direct camera, I need to make sure that when I'm delivering the lines, I'm talking to 
and my reader who is not directly in the camera. It's actually a little bit away from the camera. So you can go slightly to the left or slightly to the right, but you don't want to make your eye line super exaggerated where your whole face is completely blocked to the side. But the point is you shouldn't be directly doing it in the camera. Think about all of the TV shows and films you see. None of them are talking directly to the camera. It's they're talking to someone and you see an intimate scene from your TV. They want to know what you look like if you were to talk to someone and not directly into the camera because not a lot of shows do that. So we just went over slate, lighting, camera, medium shot, things like that. Now for the actual acting part of the audition. Do your best and really read and break down the script. Don't just like read it once and then just do it. Take your time if this is something really important to you. Now let's talk about wardrobe. Wardrobe should not be something extremely distracting. So you shouldn't have crazy hats and a bunch of props hanging out and you shouldn't have like a bunch of things that are distracting. It can be a neutral color. It can be something that really makes you pop. Maybe you want to wear like a jacket that signifies you're in a specific era. Maybe you want to wear glasses because you feel like that would make you look older, but really focus on just clean, non-distracting wardrobe. Now, once you are all done filming everything, you have to edit it together. The instructions for whoever you are submitting for will usually say, make sure you name your video file like this, and you have to make sure that when you download your file, it is named the way it's supposed to be. Make sure you edit your slate and your scene together. In my self tapes, I do my slate and then there is a small transition and you see my scene. And also I make sure there's separate takes because if I'm doing my scene and I mess up, I can do it over and over and over again because all I have to do is pick the best one and edit it next to my slate. If you're slating and then you go right into the scene, that means if you mess up in your scene, you gotta do the slate and everything all over again. So it's better and you need to slate cut and then make another video for your actual audition. I think I covered everything. I'm pretty sure that's all of it. I know a lot of people had questions specifically about this because a lot of people didn't know what a self tape was when they were submitting for my short film. So I decided to make this how to self tape video. For my short films specifically, if you are trying to submit, please do the following. Make sure you edit your slate and your scene in one video and make sure to follow directions and label your video the way it's supposed to in the email I sent. Please pay attention to the character breakdown and description. The dialogue really speaks for itself. You exactly know who that person is based on the description I gave and how they're talking and what they are saying. I don't really need to explain what is the personality of this character and no writer, producer, or casting would want to explain. Self tapes can take a while to record so make sure that you have time to do it and don't just do it last second and also don't do it very fast and then send it in. Take your time and do the best work that you feel like represents you. A lot of people don't talk about acting as a job, but it is a job. You have certain hours to fill, you have a certain thing to do, and you must complete it and do it adequately. Acting is a job. It's a fun job, but it is a job. I hope this video helped anyone who is submitting for anything or just help people with a self tape. I also am going to include some footage here of what I was talking about. So here is a self tape that I've done in the past. Here is another self tape I've done in the past. You can see a medium shot. You can see I'm not wearing anything distracting. This isn't the perfect self tape. This is just how I've been told in the industry to do them. I've taken a four week masterclass of how to self tape and I really appreciated it. And this is what I was told to do by that professional. Best of luck to everyone on their self tapes. Make sure you take the time, do the research and really do the work. Also, we have a giveaway. I am doing a giveaway for a free coaching all you have to do is say what your favorite musical is to your favorite hobbies that are not performing arts related and then put hashtag Miss B giveaway in the comments of my Meet My Corgi Appa video. We are going to announce the winner next video, a week from today. Make sure if you want to enter to do those three things in the comments for my Meet My Corgi Appa video. Also, thank you to everyone who is supporting the short film. I love that people are so interested and really like the project. I'm going to put the GoFundMe link in the description below if you would like to support support this project or if you know anyone else who would like to
to support this project, that would be amazing. Here is the link for the GoFundMe. It's down below in the description. And if you haven't already, please like this video if it was helpful and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We make a video every Friday. All right, young pupils, later.